welcome to another edition of WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego, and today we're going to be talking all about block variations, what they are, and how you can use them to both curate the editing experience within WordPress and also extend existing blocks. All right, let's get started. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be using a standard default WordPress installation with some generic content in it. And we're also going to be using the Frost theme. This is a theme that's built by uh, our WP Engine developer uh, relations team. And it basically includes all the latest and greatest features that come with WordPress. It's very cutting edge, it's very experimental. But I wanted to showcase that if, you're, if you want to attempt to uh, duplicate what you see in today's presentation. So what I'm going to be talking about today is block variations. So when we talk about block variations, the first thing we need to do is identify that a block variation is not the same thing as a block style. And this is something that I hear a lot, uh, a lot of confusion around. So in today's presentation, uh, I'm going to be kind of walking through uh, what a variation is and how to build them. Now we're going to be referencing this article over on the block editor handbook or the developer resources. I'm going to have the link in the description. And this will basically tell you how to build a variation, but we're going to so you can follow that follow that guide. Um, and, but in the video today, we're going to take it a bit further and show some more real life examples with the Frost theme. So let's head back over here. So let's the best way to describe the difference between a style and a variation is just through examples. So in the Frost theme, the Frost theme has a st block style register that's called Shadow Solid, and it's applied to the group block. So if we come down here, and again, this is a style. So if we come down here and we click on this group block, over on the right-hand side of the editor, you're going to see the different styles that are registered within Frost for the group block. We have shadow, shadow solid, and full height. And if I enable shadow solid, you can see that it adds a drop shadow, solid drop shadow, to the group. Now let's take a quick peek at the theme files for Frost to see how this is added. Again, it's the same thing you see here, it's just a little bit more complicated inside of Frost. Um, so let's hop over there. So here I have the theme folder for Frost in the functions.php file. So if you're following along at home and if you download Frost, you'll be, I just wanted to point this out. We come down here to our function called register block styles. And we just have an array here of all the different block styles that we're registering in the theme. And then we kind of have this fancy for each loop that's going through each one and registering them. But if we simplify that, it's what we see here. We have a function called register block style. We pass the name of the block with which we want to register the style. And then we have an array with both the name and the label. Now what, this, what a block style is, we get this kind of fancy interface where we can add the different styles. But really, all the only thing a block style is, is it's just a CSS class. So if we come down here and look at advanced, when I clicked shadow solid, it added this class is style shadow solid. So if I change this over just to normal shadow, you can see it has a very light drop shadow. I come back down here to my class and I can see it says is style shadow. So these block styles don't really do anything other than add a UI and dynamically apply a class. But the actual styling of these block styles we need to do manually. So not only did we need to register the block style to show up in the UI, in our style sheet, we have, you know, on line 217, we have a section for group and we have defined what is style shadow or is style shadow solid should be. Um, because if we are inside of the editor here, there is no UI for handling drop shadow, or uh, at least not yet. So we've done that in, in CSS through classes. So we have our box shadows for both is style shadow and is style shadow solid. And then when a user clicks on one of these style options, that class is applied and then they, you see that on the front end. So that's what a style is. A style is just a UI element or a button basically that adds a class and those classes are set up through the register block style. That's how you get the UI for the block style. And then in your CSS, your style sheet, you 
define what those classes would actually do. So you can do a lot of powerful things with block styles. As you can see here, we added box shadow, but it doesn't provide, it's all static. A user can't interact with it. The only interaction that they have is to change the styles, but when I'm in the editor, I can't change the box shadow. I can't change anything. So for example, if I came over here and said, is style sh shadow solid, actually said, I want the color to be red, maybe the background color to be yellow, something like that. We're just making this up as we go. And I save this and I set this over to, I set this group over to shadow solid and then we'll refresh the page. You can see here that now I have red text and yellow background and a user can't modify that directly. Now, of course they can use the color settings here, but for example, we have red text, but we're not seeing red text here and we have a yellow background, but we're not seeing that a yellow background is set because those are set in, in styles. They're not actually defined as attributes assigned to the block. So anyway, that's what a block style is. They're very simple. They're just CSS classes with a little bit of UI that's added to a block. What we wanna be talking about today is variations. Variations are very different. However, they can achieve the same result. So let's move down to this big block of code for a variation and we'll walk through kind of how this works. Now block variations, unlike block styles, have to be registered in JavaScript. So in, I'm gonna remove this real quick. So inside of our Frost theme in our functions file, our PHP file, we registered our styles. You can also register styles in JavaScript, but with variations, they only can be registered in JavaScript. So what I've done, and this is not natively in Frost, I've just added this for the purposes of this video. If we go over to our assets folder and I added a folder called JS for JavaScript and I added a designated uh, file called variations.js. Now, this is gonna get a little bit um, uh, uh, detailed, but what I've done is I've created a gist, which again is also in the, in the show notes and you can basically go to the, uh, the gist and copy all this code. But what we have here is we have a function, WP DOM ready, which wraps all the code that we're gonna talk about today. It just wraps everything. And so over in our functions.php file, towards the bottom here, I've added a standard function that's basically gonna enqueue our variations JavaScript file. And this is just using the standard WP and Q script we have a name for our, our, our file, and then we have a path to our file. And then this final array is just going to be loading some dependencies that we need in order for that JavaScript file to work. So again, these will be in the show notes, but um, you're just really copying and pasting at this point. You're gonna be copying and pasting this function. And then over in the variations, we just need to make sure that we wrap all the code that we're gonna talk about further in this video with WP DOM ready. This is make sure that our code is loaded at the right time whenever the DOM is ready. So that's kind of the rough, very quick setup of what we're gonna talk about. But now let's actually talk about registering a block variation. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uncomment this out and we can take a look at how this works. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to keep things really simple and we're gonna copy this here. So I'm going to remove all of this. So let's just take a quick look at what I've done here. So I have used the WP blocks. This is basically allows me to register the variation. So you're just gonna do WP blocks, register block variation. Then we need to pass the name of the block that we want to provide the variation for. We need a name, this is kind of like your slug, very similar to what we saw with the block style. We need a title, we need a description. I'll talk about is default in a minute, but we're just gonna set that to false. And then when you do a block variation, you're providing attributes. So if you're not familiar with what attributes are, let's come back over here to the editor. Now I'm gonna, let me just refresh the page here to get rid of our yellow color. Remember this group block has the shadow solid applied. If I take a look at the code editor and I scroll down to our, uh, our group block here, 
you can see that it says WP group class name is style shadow solid. This curly brackets, this is at, these are all the attributes applied to the block. So let's scroll up here. We can see, let's see some other blocks that we got here. So for example, this cover block, the color cover block at the top here, which it has this green background, you can see that it has the attribute overlay color tertiary, min height 500. These are all attributes. So when we come over here to registering our block variation, we can define the attributes that should be coming with this block variation. Let me quickly comment this out and we'll see what that looks like. So now we have defined a block variation for core group, we've given it some names, and the attribute that we're applying to this group is the class name is style shadow solid. So what this is gonna do is it's going to create a variation of the group block with the class name or with the block style is style shadow solid already applied. So let's come back over here, give this a refresh. So now if I come down here, and I type group, you will see that we have the normal group block option, but we also have group shadow solid. And that's what we see here, group shadow solid. We'll insert that. And you can see that the style has already been applied or the class has already been applied, which we see here. This is all well and good, but let's pretend that we wanted to do something even more fancy. You know, let's say that, for example, we wanted to just add a paragraph. This doesn't look great. You know, we probably want a border. Maybe we want some padding. So in this case, let's go to our group. Let's come down here. Let's add some padding. And how about we add a border? Something like that, right? That looks a little bit nicer. That's probably what we want the group shadow border to look like whenever we insert it rather than just the, the box shadow missing the border. So what if we could just do this automatically with a variation? If we take a quick look at the code editor, you can see that all those settings, style, spacing, bottom, border, these are all attributes. So I've already done this for us, but if we just uncomment this out, we'll remove the simplified version. Now you can see that I have all the styles applied. I have the border attribute, I have the spacing, I have the top, bottom, right, all the different attributes applied, and then I have this border color contrast. Now when you're creating block variations, it's really hard to know what the, what the attributes are. So what I always do is I just design it inside of the editor, switch over to that code view, see what the attributes are, and then copy them over to my variation. But now when we save this, Give us a refresh. Now, when we come down here and we add a group, we can do our group shadow solid. And you can see that the border and the padding are automatically applied. But I want to touch on this really quickly. So it's way more powerful than a block style, because in a block style, you could register a class, add that padding in CSS, add that border in CSS. But with a block variation, you've set the attributes. So if we scroll down here, you can see that those attributes are actually applied. We have the border, we have the padding. So a user could then come change those. We've actually created a block variation, but predefined or pre-filled out the attributes that are available to that block or provided for that block. It's really powerful and you can do some really interesting things with it. So let's jump forward to some more examples come down here and see what I got. I have a really complicated one for media and text. We're going to talk about is default true in one second. So when I refresh this now, let's come down here and we'll do media and text. So the first one is our normal one, you know, just a standard media and text. All well and good standard media and text. But what if I wanted, whenever a user created a new media and text box, maybe you've created a website for a client, you wanted to pre-design this already. So every media and text block looks the same or looks predefined in a different way. That's what we've done here with the second one. 
Now you can see that instead of the content on the right and the image on the left, I've switched it around to the content on the left and the image on the right. In addition, if we take a look at the list view here, I've added a heading and a paragraph instead of just a paragraph. So now a customer, you know, a client or whatever, instead of just pre being presented with just the default content, they now know they need to add a heading and then they need to start writing their content. You can do a lot of things here. Any attribute that the media and text block, media and text block takes, you could set, you could do typography, dimensions, all sorts of stuff. You could do all of that, define that as a block variation and a user could just quickly insert that. Now let's, let me show you what the is default true does. When you set is default true, notice how when I go to create, let's just remove this real quick. When I go to create a media and text block, I have two of them. I probably should give this one a new name. So let's just do new. Let's do a quick refresh just to hammer home the point here. So if I go to media and text, you can see that media, <laughs> okay. So I forgot to remove this. So let's just give it a little refresh. I jumped the gun on what I was trying to show here. So if we have the media and text, we have the original and then we have our new one. However, if I was to set this to the default, now whenever a user adds a media and text, oops, um, this is their only option. They only have one option and that option looks like this. So using the is default true feature, you can basically override the design of every core block in WordPress. So for example, if you never wanted a user to insert basically a blank or unstyled median text block, you could really customize this. You know, you could change the color, you could change the text, you could do all sorts of cool stuff. Save it as a block variation and set the default to true. And then that will override the default that's available in WordPress. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to kind of customize or kind of curate the editing experience for your theme users or for your clients. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is while we've registered block variations, you can also unregister block variations. And this is equally important when it comes to curating the editing experience. And in many ways, I think that this is what maybe most people will end up using is the unregistered block variation functionality. So let's go back over here, we'll remove this. Now, if I was to add a normal group, you'll notice that there's a couple different types of groups. In fact, groups, a row block and a stack block are actually group variations. So if I was to say, let's do a paragraph and maybe do, oh, I don't know, an image. Something like this, we'll just do a thumbnail. So I have my standard group, right? A row looks like this and a stack is basically a vertical flex box. Stack blocks are very, they're very niche. You probably won't use them very often. And if you're building a site for a client or you're distributing a theme to kind of more, um, to users who might not need this functionality, you may actually wanna remove variations that are provided by WordPress. In this case, almost always I use a group or a row. I almost never use stack. So perhaps in this situation, I actually want to remove the stack functionality from WordPress. And we can do that very easily. So very similar to what we did before, we have WP blocks, unregistered block variation. And in this case, we just need to pass the name of the group, sorry, the name of the block, and then the name of the variation, again over here, the name of the variation, and this will unregister that variation from WordPress. So we're gonna save this, give it a refresh. And now if we come to our, our row, you can see there's no more stack option. And if I try to search for stack, stack no longer appears. The stack block has been removed from WordPress. Now let me take this one step further to show you how this can be really powerful. And one of my favorite blocks is the social icons block. 
Oops, let me move this. Let's add it below. So here's our social icons block. And the social icons block basically allows you to add social icons. But it has a ton of social icons. And if you were creating a website for a client that you knew only used, for example, I don't know, Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and some of the more basic social platforms, it's kind of a lot to provide them with the social icons block that just gives them everything, right? It's kind of overkill, it's not really needed. It might be useful for WordPress core, but for like distributing to a client or just providing to a theme, maybe you don't need all that. Well, the beauty is, is that every one of these uh, social icons is actually a variation. It's just a, it's just a block variation of the, the social link block. So one of the cool things that we can do, and I've actually prepared this for us, and I've, this is in the gist, so if you just want to copy and paste it from the linked gist, you, you're welcome to. But what I've done is I've gone a little bit fancy, and I have an array of all the different social icons that I don't want. And then for each of them, I am unregistering that variation. So I'm just a little for each loop, and I'm using WP blocks, unregistered block variation, Again, the name of the block is core social link, and then I'm unregistering all of these. So let's save this now, and you can see how much simpler this becomes. Now, when I go to add a social icon, I just have these six. And when I click browse all, I just have those six instead of that huge long list. And one of the other cool things is the embed feature. Oops, not here the embed block, all these embeds, these are also variations. I don't have a code snippet for you, but you can also unregister all of these code snippets, uh, sorry, all of these embeds from WordPress. So if your user only, if your customer or whatever only uses maybe YouTube or Vimeo or Twitter, for example, you can just unregister all the rest of them. So it provides you with a way to curate the editing experience, remove things that maybe a user won't want to need, won't, won't use. So quick recap, variations. They're not block styles. <laughs> they do a lot more than that. They're registered in JavaScript and they allow you to define a variation of a block that is differs by the attributes of the block itself. Uh, and you can see here, if we, one thing I didn't touch on too deeply is that when I was talking about that media and text block, not only attributes can you change, you can also define inner blocks. So let me just quickly go back and hammer home this point. So if I was to add my media and text again, not only does this block have different color, different background and whatnot, inside of this block, we now have a paragraph and a heading instead of just a paragraph. And so one of the things you'll see here is that in addition to attributes that I've defined, I've also defined inner blocks. And this is so for blocks that contain other blocks like groups and cover and median text and columns and that sort of thing, you can define inner blocks that you know, blocks that are inside of that container that are also show up whenever you render a block variation. So again, there's more information. You can check that out here in the uh, variations uh, article. And uh, very soon we'll probably also have an article up on our WP Engine Builder site. Um, but hopefully this gives you kind of a general overview of how both variations work and unregistered block variations work. All right, so hopefully that quick video showed you a little bit about how variations work in WordPress, how you can use them to both extend WordPress, simplify WordPress, and curate that editing experience for your users or customers. So that's all for today. Again, my name is Nick Diego. I'm a developer advocate at WP Engine. Uh, if you'd like to stay tuned for more information about you know, the latest building techniques in WordPress, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Have a good day.